What's up my pre-calc people? Let's take a look right now at a couple multiple choice questions that come out of unit two over exponential and logarithmic functions. All right, let's take a look. All right, before we dive into the practice problems, I want to say that all of the questions in this video are taken from the AP Precalculus course and exam description. And in that description, it says that 20 to 28% of all the multiple choice in the AP Precalculus exam will be over exponential logarithmic functions. So let's just take a couple right now so you can kind of get a feel for the types of questions that you're going to be asked. All right, in this first question, it says let k, w, and z be positive constants. Which of the following is equivalent to log base 10 of kz divided by w squared? This is a classic expansion problem. We want to use our log rules to expand this from a single log to multiple logs. So hopefully this will be pretty easy if you remember those rules. So first, I have this division right here that I'm going to separate with subtraction. So I have log base 10 of kz minus log of w squared base 10, which I guess I don't have to write the 10 if I can just write a log. Then right here, I'm going to expand this multiplication with addition. So that's log base 10 of k plus log base 10 of z. Then I'm going to use the power rule and I'm going to bring this 2 out in front. So I have minus 2 log base 10 of w. So there should be my final answer, which I see is choice b. So very, very nice and simple there. Not too bad as long as you remember those very simple rules. All right, and this problem says values of the terms of a geometric sequence g sub n are graphed in the figure. Which of the following is an expression for the nth term of the geometric sequence? All right, so they give us a graph here of some inputs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then some outputs. Now, a couple things I want to do that's going to make this problem hopefully a little bit easier, because this is a tough problem if we don't understand a couple things. First, what is the generic formula for a geometric sequence? Well, it's a sub k. That's the kth term, any k you want. That could be the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, whatever term you want. Multiplied by the common ratio, raised to n minus k. So again, k is any term you want. So this could be the first term, that means k is 1. This could be the 15th term, that means k is 15. Whatever you want, then r is that common ratio that we're multiplying by. So let's first figure out what that common ratio that we're multiplying by is. And, and maybe it would help if you make a little table of this too. Like, you know, 1, 2, 3, four, five, those are my inputs, and then my outputs are eight, four, two, one, and at five it looks to be about a half. Okay, so it looks like I'm clearly multiplying by one half. Dividing by two, multiplying by one half is the same thing. So it's pretty obvious that my r value is going to be one half. That's kind of awesome. Now, what do I do for the rest of this? Well, again, I'm allowed to pick any term I want. a sub k is any term, and again, k is the any term you want. So I could pick, for example, the third term. So the third term's value is 2. So I'm going to put that 2 out in front. That is the third term. And then n minus 3 goes into my um, exponent. Now, if I look at my choices, I don't see that choice anywhere. Well, there's always a little bit of manipulation you could do. So, for example, I could give the 1 half to the n and then the 1 half to the negative 3. I could separate that power. Again, that's one of our power rules or our exponent rules. Okay, so now I could do this. Well, one half to the negative three, well, one half to the negative three, that's one eighth, you guys should know that. So I give two times one eighth, which is two eighths, times one half to the n. And then of course, two eighths is one fourth, so one fourth times one half to the n. Okay, so do I see that anywhere? Uh, no, I don't. So these are all equivalent answers, right? Like this answer right here is an equation that would satisfy this sequence. And so with this, it's just a different form of it. And I don't see any of those choices. So what do I do from here? Well, I could just try a different point. Like, for example, I could look at choice A and I say, well, they use 4, which is the second term. Okay, well, let me use the second term. Remember, you're allowed to use any term you want. So my formula would be 4, that's the second term times that one half raised to the n minus two because the, the two is the second term that produced the four. And then I say, oh my gosh, wait a minute. That is choice A. So there is my answer A. And again, B is not right because the value of eight, the term that is it, that's the first term. Well, wait a minute. That could work. Oh, but look at the ratio. They had a ratio of two there. The ratio is one half. We're multiplying by half, not two and so forth. So you could kind of like figure it out by looking at that. But you have to understand that you could use any term you want to create the equations. So you got to be careful that now you don't get fooled by jumping to conclusions here. The other thing you could do on this problem is just guess and check, right? Like you could say, okay, I need to plug in three and get two. 
which equation do I plug in three and get two? Maybe that helps eliminate one or two of them. And they say, okay, well, I need to be able to plug in five and get a half. Which equation allows me to plug in five and get a half? You do have to make sure that it works for all of them, but you can start to eliminate just by using guess and check as well. But really understanding the formula right here for a geometric sequence is going to really help you understand that problem. All right, in this problem, it says the value in millions of dollars of transactions processed by an online payment platform is modeled by the function M. The value is expected to increase by 6.1% each quarter of a year at time zero years. $54 million of transactions was processed. If T is measured in years, which of the following is an expression for M of T? All right, so here, hopefully, we know how to build a model. Pretty easy to build a model here. So out in front, we're going to build the model for this function. Out in front is going to go the initial value, so that's going to be 54 at a time of zero years. And then in parentheses is going to be my, my growth rate or my decay rate. We'll clearly set them increasing by 6.1%. That's going to be 1 plus 0 0.061. I'm increasing, so I'm going to add that 6.1% as a decimal. So, of course, that's going to be 1.061. So, I can immediately get rid of A and B because they're using, they're, they're decaying. They're, they're not using it properly. It's got to be 1 plus that rate. Okay. Now, it wants T to be measured in years. So, some people would just put a T here, but I got to be careful because it's doing it, it's increasing every quarter. It's not increasing 6.1% every year. If it was increasing 6.1% every year, I'd just put a T as my exponent, I'd be done. But it's doing it every year, or every four times a year, every quarter, right? Four times a year. So I'm thinking, I, I want this value up here has got to be in quarters, but I want T to be in years. So how do you convert years to quarters? Well, every year there's four quarters, so I'm going to take four times T. So I get four T as my exponent. Begin, if I have five years, for example, right? I'd plug in five, but in that five years, it's actually going to be changed. It's going to be increased 20 times because four times a year. So that's why I have to put that four in there to multiply the year. That way it goes to quarters. So now we see that the answer is D. So many kids want to jump and say C because they think, oh, uh, it's going to be four times a year. That's one fourth of a year. You got to be careful. You got to understand T represents years, but I'm doing it every quarter. So I got to take those years, multiply by four to figure out the total quarters that my, my money is going to be increased by. All right. So hopefully you figured that one out. Not too bad. But you really got to think through that one. Now, here's actually another one that's very similar in a lot of ways. Iodine-131 is a half-life of eight year, eight days which means every eight days it gets cut in half. So right away, I know my ratio is a half. That's pretty simple. And in particular sample, the amount of iodine-131 remaining after D days can be modeled by the function. Let's see here. So we have the initial amount times 0.5. That's because it's getting cut in half. And then it's D divided by eight. Now that's because every eight days is when it's going to get cut in half. So if I plug in 8, 8 divided by 8 is 1, so it's going to get cut in half one time. Every 16 days, it's going to get in half, it's going to get cut in half twice, you get the idea. Now, the deal with this question is, they simply want me to create an equation that is in days. They want the T to be in days. Or, um, excuse me, it's already in days, I'm so sorry. It says after T hours, after T hours. Okay, so we need to not use D. Because right now, D's in days, we need to be in hours. So I'm thinking, okay, D is in days. I, 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 you know, the original equation was built on days. So how do I convert hours to days? Because I'm going to plug in T, and that T is going to be in hours. But when I go to my equation, it needs to turn into days. So how do I turn hours into days? Well, you divide by 24. If you had 48 hours, you would divide by 24 and say, hey, that's two days. So T hours divided by 24 would be equal to a day. So if I'm going to change this equation to be in hours, that D is going to now be changed to T divided by 24, all divided by 8. Now, I know that looks a little confusing, but again, walk through that for a second. And pick a nice simple number like all right, 24 hours. 24 hours is one day. So if I plug in 24, it gets divided by 24 to go to one day. Now it's going to match the original equation where that numerator right here was in days. Pretty simple. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. But now I don't see that choice anywhere, so I do have to clean this up a little bit. So let's do some simple math over to the side here. T divided by 24 
divided by one eighth. Well, divide, divided by eight is the same thing as multiplying by one eighth. Excuse me, t divided by 24, divided by eight, same thing as multiplying by one eighth. That's going to be t over 192. Okay, so realistically, my final answer, a little bit cleaned up here, would be a sub zero, that's the initial amount, times 0.5, raised to the t divided by 192. Now, do I see that choice? No, but I do see a choice that's very similar. All they're doing is they're pulling that 192 out separately, and they're going 0.5 raised to the 192, all raised to the T. It's the same thing if we just use our exponent rules. If you have two powers, you just multiply them, so 1 over 192 raised to the T would be T over 192. All right, so hopefully that question made sense. It's really just a conversion problem, which again, I know for some kids, especially my students in class, can be a little bit tricky. But you got to think the original problem is in days. They want hours. So how do I turn hours into days? Because if I'm going to replace that D with something in terms of hours, I got to think, what would you do to hours to convert it to days? And you divide it by 24. All right, here is a solving, a logarithmic solving problem. Got to love these problems. All right, so we want to solve this equation. Now, I'm actually going to show you several different ways you could solve this, and I hope that they all make sense. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I could use some of my um, rules for logarithms to combine. So I do have subtraction right here. So I can bring subtraction together with division. So that's going to be x cubed divided by x equals 4. I can then reduce that. That's going to be the natural log of x squared equals 4. And then I can use my power rule, bring that 2 out in front. 2 times the natural log of x equals 4. Then I could divide both sides by 2, and I get the natural log of x equals 2. And then I can now solve this by using, you know, converting this from a logarithmic equation to an exponential equation. So my base is e, my exponent is 2, and I equal x. So there, I'm done. e squared equals x. So there is my answer right there. But I actually want to show you another way that we could do this. Okay. So let's see here. Let's go back to this step right here. At that step right there, I brought the two down using the power rule. What if you decided not to do that? Well, okay. So at that point, you would go right to converting it to an exponential equation. So I do e raised to the four equals x squared. And now I'm going to solve. How do you get rid of that square on that x? You're going to take a square root or raise it to the one half power. So it's going to be e to the fourth raised to the one half power equals x e raised to the fourth raised to the one half is going to be e squared. Now, the only thing here is you'd say, well, wait a minute. I thought when you take a square root, you got to put a plus or minus in front. Does that mean the answer could be plus or minus, which is what choice B says? Well, no, because remember, you're not allowed to have a negative in a natural log. So if this was a choice, negative e squared, that's a negative number, right? You should calculate if you need to. It's a negative number. And if I plug a negative number into a natural log, it's going to be D and E. So I, I can't do it. That would be an extraneous solution. That solution is not going to work. So I definitely do not want that solution. And just for fun, I'm actually going to walk through one different solution you could do. Something else you could do is bring the three down in front from the very beginning using our power rule. So we have three natural log of x minus one natural log of x equals four. And then you could say, well, if I have three natural log of x minus one natural log of x, I have two natural log of x. It's like three apples minus one apples, two apples, right? And then I could divide by two and I get the natural log of x equals two. And then I'm right back to where I was over here, where I'm just going to use my exponent rules to convert this from a natural log statement to an exponential statement, e squared equals x. All right, so there we go. The final answer is c. Hopefully not too bad. All right, last problem here, and this is a calculator one. So again, I want to notice that this was from the calculator portion of the exam. All right, the table presents values for a function f at selected values of x. An exponential regression, y equals a plus, or a times b to the x, is used to model this data. What is the value of f of 1.5 predicted by the exponential function model? All right, so basically we want to take 1.5 and plug it into the model, but I need the model first. And how do I find that model? You're going to need your calculator for sure. Hopefully you are really well trained on how to find regression models on your calculator. First, we have to put the data into our calculator. So we're going to hit stat, edit, and then we're going to put the x's in list 1 and the y's in list 2. So negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. And then the output's 10, 15, 40, 56. Pretty simple. Then we're going to hit the stat button. And we're going to slide over to calculate. And we're going to select the exponential model. That's what it asks for, a times b to the x. 
Gonna scroll down a little bit here. It's option zero, exponential regression, E-X-P-R-E-G. And then it's gonna ask for the X data that we had in list one. So second number one gets list one. The Y data, second number two for list two. And don't put anything in the frequency list. And then you can actually store it because I'm gonna, I, once I build, I'm gonna wanna use it, right? I gotta plug 1.5 in. So I can even have the calculator help me with that. So to store it, I'm gonna hit VARS. Slide over to Y vars, select function, and select Y1. That's going to automatically take the regression model it builds and put it into Y1 so I could use it. All right, so here I go, and there is the model. So my A value would be 24.076, my B value would be 1.5. Five, six. All right, so we could come back here and write that model down. I actually don't need to, but if you, if you want to, and I'm going to show you why I don't need to in a second, but that is the model, and I could go ahead and then plug 1.5 into that model, so take 1.5 and plug it in, and I'll get the answer, but again, I could speed all that up by having the calculator do that for me. I asked the calculator to store that equation in Y1. If you hit Y equals, you can actually see it, but now I could use it. So if I hit VARS in my, from the home screen, go to Y VARS, function, Y1, and then next to that Y1, put a 1.5 in parentheses, the calculator is going to take 1.5 and plug it into that equation, doing all the math for me, and there we go, 46.767, which is choice A. So if you know how to use your calculator, that's a pretty simple, pretty fast problem to build the model and then store it and actually use it. All right, that's it for the practice problems. So if this will give you a nice quick little view of the different types of logarithm and exponential problems that you might see on the AP Pre-Calculus exam.